Good morning. This is lecture number 14 of my series of lectures. And today I'm going to talk about the best age for treatment. Now, there is a lot of debate about this because my father was trained in 1921. He was also an orthodontist and he was taught by his professor, who was Harold Chapman, that the best age to start treatment was about four or five years old. Now, this at the time was standard treatment in the United Kingdom. Harold Chapman said that if there was not enough space between the baby teeth, the deciduous teeth, at the age of four or maybe five, then you should start treatment at that time. Now, he used to say that there should be room for a half crown between each deciduous tooth. Now, a half crown is an old English coin which is not used now, but it is almost two millimetres thick. And that is quite a lot of spacing. And I actually believe that if children grow up correctly with their tongue and their palate, then they should develop that sort of spacing. Certainly, if there is not that amount of spacing, I think it is wise to consider expansion as young as four. I occasionally expand at three, but four is usually my youngest age. Now, you might ask why it was that when I trained uh, some 25 years later, I was taught that expansion was a complete waste of time, nothing marginal about it. They said it was a total waste of time because the teeth would go back afterwards. In actual fact, I later on researched this and found that the teeth actually only go back about halfway. So I don't know why they were so upset about the half gain which they could actually achieve. Now, I think the best example I could show of early treatment is my son, Michael. I actually started treatment on him at the age of five. Um, that was because his deciduous teeth not only didn't have any spacing, but were actually slightly crowded. Now, I think all of you would know that if a child at the age of five has crowded deciduous teeth, <clears throat> they are going to have a very severe malocclusion when they grow up. I could see that, and so I decided to treat Michael at that age. Now, the x-rays that I took of him, and you can see the initial widening, which opened the space, the midline suture, between the two halves of the upper jaw. And if you look carefully, you can see that the unerupted teeth have actually moved apart, the two centrals are further apart, although they are still buried in the bone. That shows that expanding at that age actually widens the bone. But because, of course, I expand quite slowly, there's no black gap between the two halves of the maxilla, which is common if you x-ray children who are or have been expanded. There's often a black space in the middle because a suture has separated but the bone has not had time to form. So clearly there is an advantage in expanding at the age of five. And you can see that a year later, uh, there is plenty of room for all his permanent teeth. And there's actually slight spacing between them. It is very important, I think, that we bear in mind the option of treating early. The trouble is, most parents do not see anything wrong with a child's baby teeth. They think they're going to fall out anyway, they don't matter. 
but they are a very good indication. And as you know, I use the indicator line to assess how far back the baby teeth are. Now, um, I can show you an example of the effect of natural growth on a child whose baby teeth were too far back. You can see him in the first picture I show on the left at the age of four. Now, his face looks okay. You can't imagine any parent at that age saying, oh, his face is the wrong shape. But if you take the indicator line measurement, it was actually, I think, nine millimeters too high. Now, that shows that the child's face is growing downwards, not forwards, even although he looks perfectly sweet at the age of four, you can forecast that by the time he grows up, he will develop a lot of vertical growth with his chin downwards and backwards. And I think you can see that in the second frame on the opposite side. I warn you about this because many parents are quite unaware that their beautiful young children could change into something that isn't attractive. This change usually occurs about the age of six or seven, sometimes eight. But a mother should be aware of this and should certainly take advice if they think it is likely to happen. Remember, the simple way is simply to measure the indicator line. That is the distance between the tip of the nose and the edge of the upper front teeth. At the age of six, that should be about 29 millimeters, give or take a two. Uh, or three millimeters, but it is a very good sign of future growth. And I think that the last slide I show is a, a good indication of the adverse change that can take place in a pretty child's face if something is not done to correct their growth at the age of six. So in my view, Six is the right age to consider treatment, if not a bit earlier at the age of four. I hope you'll be helped by that advice. And um, that is the end of the lecture for today.